acknowledging the worth of everyone, including ourselves, um, and we do believe that God's doors are open to all. We are situated on the ancestral homeland of the Cowlitz, Chinook, and Kwikwetak nations, and we acknowledge and respect the uh, those who came before us in stewarding this land, and the and acknowledge the difficulties in it no longer being so. A variety of announcements. If you are visiting especially or want to write me a note or update your address or write somebody else a note, we, there are these sheets that were out on the table. Um, we don't have them in the bulletins because I noticed nobody really likes filling them out. And a second. No, oh, it says it's on. Maybe I didn't turn it on. Just a second. They're telling me it's off. It is. But it wasn't the same thing they said. So people at home, I'm sorry you didn't hear anything I said. Um, I'm Pastor Jean at Beautiful Savior Lutheran. And um, for the announcements today after worship is our annual meeting. For those who are voting members, uh, you'll sign in. And others that are just interested and aren't voting members, you are able to add voice, um, but not vote. So that'll be at about 12.15. Um, daylight savings time, it says in the bulletin, is October 31st, but it's been corrected to being the next week, the first Sunday in November. So all is good for next week. Trunk or treat, we're gonna have an announcement. Yeah, you can use that one. Okay, just a quick announcement. Trunk or Treat is next Saturday from 2 to 4. We have nine trunks signed up already. Um, we could use some more if you'd like to participate. I hear there is a competition between the confirmation kids and the high school kids. So um, next Saturday, 2 to 4, um, let me know if you want to sign up. Thanks. And we'll go ahead with the next other announcements? I want to thank you all so far for your generous donations for the ELCA youth gathering next summer for the high school and middle school youth. We've got about $1,500 donated so far off of last count, so the airplane is well in the air. We're still in Washington State. Spokane is on the horizon, so we've got a long way to go. Um, this week, or this, we've been doing some lesson plans to get ready for the trip for the high school youth and this month we've been looking at the themes of God's boundless love and so that's exciting. Um, there is still a basket of envelopes out in the narthex if you want to donate the number that is on the envelope that will um, is a way to for everyone to contribute from low amounts to up to $144 of the envelopes um, and we'll be doing other fundraisers as we get closer. Thank you. Thanks Evan. All right, and I wanted to say thank you and acknowledge that we are almost to $75,000 of our $100,000 goal to, for the sewer. Yay! And hopefully the contractors will finally be able to give us a bid. Uh, they've been super busy. Next week, we have a confirmation, an affirmation of baptism of Jenna. So um, that's at the 11 o'clock service. It's also Reformation Sunday, and that's the day we just kind of play around and wear red. So if you have a red shirt or something, I'm not sure I do anymore, um, that's just a day to make it a bright color celebrative. Uh, it is when we celebrate the, the changing, the transformation of church, and that as people who ended up with the name Lutheran, we commit to being an always reforming um, people of God. Those are the main notes in the worship folder, I think, but I do have some news that I need to tell you. Um, we found out in a roundabout way that Marie McClellan died in August, August 22nd. Her estate, we are included in her estate, and that's how we found out. Um, so for some of you, Elsie B., she 
fell last week and broke her upper arm and her elbow, and so she will be moving with her daughter up near Seattle or Tacoma, somewhere that way. And so we're going to miss her effervescent self. And then um, the Wednesday before last weekend, uh, Bobby Eaton died suddenly and unexpectedly. Um, so we will be having her funeral, I believe, on November 20th. It will, we have to pay attention to the restrictions and the like about who is invited to come, but that is the plan at this point. We're going to continue with the little cups for communion because the COVID numbers really didn't come down. I think by two we did uh, per day and the death rate was still high. So just to be safe, we had another of our members um, fighting COVID this week. So I just want to keep it as restricted as possible. Anything else for the good of the congregation? All right, hopefully I remember to turn my mic on. <laughs> oh, I do have one more thing. I just looked at him. See this um, person sitting over here next to Stephen? It's Stephen, Stephen Hosley. Ha, I didn't tell you I was going to do this. But um, I've been missing him because since the, he has a new job and he can't be here all the time. And since we were so restricted, he stepped into so many shoes and doing things. So when he's gone... It's always chaotic because there's so many things that I have to pay attention to. So I just want to say thank you to Stephen. And I almost cried when I saw him this morning. I was so happy to see him. <laughs> so, so, yeah. Yeah. So thank you. Um, with that, we begin our time more formally of worship. God of the unlikely, the invisible, the unseen. God of the neglected, rejected, and unexpected. It's all people in your image who sees our promise, our potential, who looks beyond the outward and knows us heart, mind, and soul. You have chosen us to be your people, awed, anointed by your spirit, and gathered together this day. We worship you. able to sing out. Christ, beloved children of God, 
Grace, mercy, and peace be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. We pray, God of strength, in David, you, you chose, chose a king with a, with a big, big heart. heart. Create, Create clean and, and willing hearts in us and, and choose us to, to do your work. work. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of the word. Yep. Hello. You at that at home don't have these passages. This part. After Saul was rebuked because he ignored the Lord's commands, Samuel went to Ramah, and Saul went up to his house in Gibeah of Saul. Samuel did not see Saul again until the day of his death, but Samuel grieved over Saul, and the Lord was sorry that he had made Saul king over Israel. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him trembling and said, Do you come peace peaceably? He said, Peaceably. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked at Elab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals look. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, 
rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers, and the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David. From that day forward, Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading from Psalm 51. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain in me a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from bloodshed, O God, O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your deliverance. Amen. So if there are children, which I saw too, but now I don't see, we'll meet over here by the fish. They may have walked away. Well, I'll still come over here for a little bit. Um, this morning at the earlier service, the kids chose the name of the fish, and this, I introduce you, is Zippy. All right, and William is the one who came up with that name. We still need to get a name for the snail. It's hard to see it. Um, they, one of the kids this morning did say slimy. Seemed like it would be perfect, but not everyone thought so. So we'll do a drawing and have this service do that um, pulling out of the name. So um, any of you children at home that are watching, or if there are children now coming over, um, Max, are you coming over? Is Sherry coming? Oh, okay. Sherry disappeared. Oh, that's not good. All right. Yeah. So, all right. So, I was going to have you bring your mom to, but all right. You missed the story because I think you were out there um, that we just heard about Samuel anointing someone named David to be the new king. So, um, he actually, when David came in, he poured oil all over the top. Of David, because that is how you were, that the anointing of someone to d do the service of being a king, all right? So, if we were going to anoint someone in this space today to do the work of God, who do you think that person would be? Oh, No, I didn't mean me, but you made it easier on me to, by saying you. So I don't know if you'd pick an adult or, or someone, but actually um, David came in. He is probably a little older than you, not much. He was out by himself taking care of sheep, so that's why I kind of guessed that he was. And it's a reminder that it doesn't matter if we're young or old or in between, that God has things for us to do. So I am anointing you, just like you might have been anointed in baptism with the cross of Jesus, but I'm making a heart too. All right. And oil is a sign of being chosen and set aside. And so each one of us that's beloved by God, if we were baptized, then we had that sign made on our forehead when we were baptized water or oil, doesn't matter. But you have things to do for God. Don't know what those are. God will help you understand that. I do know it, it's important for us to show the kind of love and care that God shows us through Jesus. So I know that part about how we live. But it'll be interesting to see what God wants to do through you right now and as you get older, if, how that changes. All right? So... Um, 
every single one of us, and if you're at home, and make the sign of the cross with a little bit of olive oil, works really well. Uh, this is not olive oil. I don't, it, well, it might be. Hmm. Anyway, um, just remind yourself that you are chosen and you are beloved, and God has a role for us to, to play in God's work. We're God's hands, too. All right? So let us pray. Holy God, it's unbelievable how you trust us to do your will, to show your love, and help others know your love, too. Make it possible. Thank you, God. Amen. All right. so, thank you. Oh, for you and your sister, because she just walked in. All right, thank you. There are color crayons out on the counter if you want color. Okay. All right, we have some less than typical Lutherans sitting closer. So I'll go behind here before I take this off. But it's nice to see everyone and to have people closer. So in the story we read or heard today, it's been quite a bit of time since uh, the story we heard last week. Last week, we heard that Samuel who was maybe 11, 12 years old, had been chosen by God because Eli, the one who had been identified as a priest, had been swayed, had not um, held his sons accountable in how they had fallen away from the ways of God. And so Eli needed to be replaced and his sons. And Samuel was the one who was chosen, and even though he also was young at that time. He grew, and God worked through him and made the things that he said to, um, to happen. And eventually, Samuel, who had been working with the people that were the, the um, judges for the different tribes, they kept asking him, when are we going to get a king? We want to be like all the other nations. They have a king. They have someone they can point to. We don't like being different. And so Samuel said, well, you might get some things with this king that you don't really want. Um, really think about it. But they kept insisting. So God worked with Samuel to anoint and name as the first king of the Hebrew people, Saul. And it says, if you went back in the time, that Saul was chosen because he was good-looking and tall. He was at least a foot ahead, above everyone else. And human nature does seem to like tall people, especially tall men, um, to be in roles of authority and power. And uh, they've done studies on that. So Saul was chosen for that reason, that's all we know. It might have been some other reason, too. And Samuel helped Saul to rule, gave him a lot of advice from God, and helped to shape the ministry. There were a few wars, at least a couple, and um, over time, Saul, who was faithful, especially in the beginning, started assuming he knew what was right. And so he would be told to do whatever it was he was supposed to do, and he would change it up a little bit. And so Samuel called him to account uh, those couple of times. The passage right before what we heard today, um, there had been a war. I don't even want to talk about what was supposed to have happened, and Saul actually showed a little bit of grace and kept some people alive. Um, and so it was that he was called to account by Samuel and told that he was going to lose the ability to be the leader of the people. He'd actually said it one time earlier as well. But in that passage, God said twice, we heard one of them, that God regretted having Saul be this king. 
Some people get a little stressed out at the idea of God regretting anything because doesn't God already know everything? Um, how could God be surprised and, and the like? But we get the sense that God sees, saw in Paul, sees in us potential and has a way that if we are seeking God's direction, we will have a path that will be to the glory of God and for the fulfillment of our own selves. Some of us get put in really dicey situations, but most of us don't. We are just able to live a life that helps to transform the animosity in the world by being a different type of voice, but that, that's it. Um, I know when I ask God to direct me, I tend to find my way into the paths that um, seem right. So I always want to encourage people to do that. Um, it's not always easy because sometimes you want to do this and all of a sudden you need to do that. And so that's kind of what happened with Saul. He'd become popular because he was tall and good looking. He um, probably had a lot of people supporting him, but also honoring him because of his power also. And I think it went to his head a little bit. Um, we do know that God says no more, that I am not going to be working to support your, mini your leadership anymore. And that's a little uncomfortable because we like to think of God being a forgiving God. But we have to also remember that God we heard in our passage today, could see into the heart of Saul, and something seemed a barrier to being able to trust Saul to get his act back together or to do what he was supposed to as a leader for the good of the people. See, that is what God was seeking. Um, the, the ruler would shepherd the people and take care of their needs and protect them as well. So Saul actually ended up having a whole lot of problems in the many passages to come. Samuel had a conflicted relationship with Saul anyway, but he, somehow or another he had developed a sense of closeness or devotion, I imagine, to this one Saul because he is regretting, I mean, he's grieving the fact that um, Saul is not going to have God's support. It might be that Samuel felt responsibility for not being able to make things right. It might be he was going to miss um, Saul. But we hear in this passage that he, no, he never again saw Saul. And so it also is that after this story, Samuel kind of goes by the wayside. And you might think, why not Samuel? If he was being faithful and had been chosen by God, why not him be the... the um, king. He was, I think I read, in his 90s, so it might not have been the best job for him anyway, but just as his mentor, Eli, had made allowances for his sons that were against the ways of God and did not work well in, as a religious leader, guess what? Samuel did the same. So he had served God very faithfully, but he had not um, stood up to his own sons and had put his sons into the religious um, leadership and they also had failed to be faithful. So Samuel after this is pretty much gone, even though the whole book is called First Samuel and there's another whole book called Second Samuel. Um, Samuel isn't in the book, so to speak. He, he's in there um, for having brought up David. David actually is the rest of this story and then the next book, 2 Samuel, and partway into Kings. So David is a big deal in scripture. He's probably the second most referred to person uh, other than Jesus. So he had an important role, but at this point, he was somebody unknown. He was young. He being the youngest, had no understood power and privilege. He is the last person anyone would have thought of being the king. Even though God keeps picking the most unlikely person, and it seems to have some kind of um, 
soft spot for the, the youngest, like Josiah, um, or uh, I'm teasing him uh, because I'm just getting to know Josiah, but, um, you know, Isaiah is somebody we've turned to. So sometimes the youngest person um, is the person that God has in mind. We don't know. It is funny that Samuel, as the sons are coming, sees the first son, the oldest son, the one you think would be the chosen one, and says, yes, that one looks the part. And God said, no, no, no. You're looking at the outside. You need to look inside. And so all these sons go walking by. There's seven sons. And I would expect that by this point, Samuel's going, all right, God, you told me Jesse was going to be the dad of the king, but what's going on? So he asked Jesse about any other son, and Jesse hadn't even thought about bringing him in. That's how low esteem or low power and privilege he would have been in this culture. And he's out being a shepherd, which wasn't that highly thought of a role to be doing, even though the idea of shepherding people is uh, uh, that kings should be like shepherds. You wouldn't think you'd bring someone in from outside um, who's just then been doing the, the sheep herding. So um, he probably stank. The rest of them all made themselves sanctified, cleaned themselves up. They were um, set aside. And here comes David, probably sleeping out with the sheep, not in the best of shape. But we do hear that he's ruddy. His skin is um, a reddish color, and he has beautiful eyes, and he's good looking. So it isn't that God's against people looking good. It's just that we need to look at more than outward appearance uh, before we make a dis decision or a choice or judge someone as right or wrong. So... Um, Samuel came and poured the oil over David and anointed him king. But he's a kid. And even though these passages have been talking about Saul being all done, Saul continues as a ruler for some time to come. Things don't always go very well. Um, but we're going to jump way past all these fun stories about David um, playing the lyre at, at I keep trying to, a guitar, um, a liar to calm down Saul's troubled spirit, how he um, killed Goliath, not with lots of army um, gear, but with his slingshot. And he had other things about him that showed that he had a lot of gift and he was a good person to have in this role. Um, he also seems to have been really attractive to a couple of people in Saul's family, um, especially Jonathan, and then I think he also married one of the daughters of Saul. But he wasn't fully developed. He was, had potential. He lived into it for some time, but then he became really popular with the people. He had his power and authority, and all of a sudden he started to reveal the side we all have. We all have good and bad in us. We all do things that are hurtful to other people and things that are in support of, our, of the world and other people. And David showed that he also was pretty messed up. Um, so he eventually had to pay certain prices, or his family did, but he was a complicated man who still tried hard and in his heart had a connection to God and God never did betray or put him aside. It's not a betrayal. It's a put um, David aside and say no more. And in fact, the Messiah would come from the, the line of David. We see some of this happen in our own world. We see when someone becomes a, a big star, a, um, could be an actor, a musician, it could be someone in the church who is ch uh, pastor of a mega church. There's been a lot of people that have fallen um, in recent years or in the last 20 years, 
And then that's not even to talk about all the clergy misconduct that has hurt many people and lives um, around the world. And I know that the Roman Catholic Church gets talked about in that way in the priests, but our church also has history. And it's because sometimes when people put you on a pedestal or sometimes you're lifted up into a place of too much power and privilege, it goes to your head and you make wrong choices. It can happen in any of our lives. We all have shadow. We all have light within us. And so we need, part of being the people of God is to help one another to stay faithful to what God is calling out from us individually and as a community. And so I would encourage all of us to think about what role are we to play as individuals and as a faith community to live into the witness of Jesus that shows love and forgiveness and care and inclusion and um, that everyone is invited to the table. And think about, are you a Samuel type person who is someone that sometimes has to speak truth to power and help people see their way on the path that, that God has set before them? Um, are you the person who needs to identify, oh, you have gifts that really would, would serve God well if you became a pastor or a teacher or a musician or a mathematician. All right, seeing all the different roles that God can work through in the world. That's Samuel's role, a, a prophet and a, an encourager and a, an equipper. Or are you the person that God is saying, I need you to step up in front? I don't care if you are not what someone else would think um, should be the leader. Uh, if you're not, if you don't even think that you should be the leader, I think you are because I've given you that capacity. Think about those things as we go forward in these times. And... We're going to read a litany now um, that's in the bulletin. It's a reflection back on the story to fill in some of the gaps, but I also included it on the back of the announcements so that if you want to take it home and tear it off, you can um, take it and reflect upon it for yourselves um, in the weeks to come. Let us hear or speak the litany. Ignored, ignored because they, they are, are too, too young. young or too old or too anything those the world quickly and unfairly sizes up David one of the superstars of God's story our, our story. story David is introduced as Jesse's youngest son maybe, maybe the, the handsomest, handsomest but, but certainly, certainly not, not the, the biggest, biggest or strongest, strongest. But Samuel passes the older brothers by. Samuel, Samuel anoints, anoints David. David. God has chosen David for greatness, an, an unlikely ruler, ruler an unusual, unusual king. king. David, who will slay Goliath. David, David who, who will write, write and play beautiful, beautiful music. David, who will rule wisely and well. David, who will become, become beloved by, by the people. But this is also David who will sin greatly, who will, who will take, take another, another man's, man's wife and have him killed in battle. David, David another, another of God's, God's flawed and imperfect and special people. God does not overlook David because of age or size. God sees David's potential. God sees his heart. And God makes a choice. And, and David, David lives, lives into that choice. Do we ever feel ignored? Do we ever feel overlooked? 
do, ev do we ever think that no one sees our potential? Can we go beyond the misjudgments of this world? Can we see ourselves as God sees us? People of great worth, people of limited, limitless potential, can we try to feel worthy of God's favor and live into God's choice? For we are, all of us, vital parts of God's story. Flawed and sinful as we are, we, we like, like David, David, have so much to give, so much to offer. We, like David, can do great things with God's help. May, May we, we look, look at, at ourselves in, in the, the mirror, mirror and, and see promise. promise. May we accept and love ourselves just as we are, knowing God does too. Believing God will use us, imperfections and all. For the, For the building, building of God's kingdom, kingdom of love here on earth. On earth. Amen. Amen. I would encourage you to tear that off and ponder your place in God's world. And for someone I had conversation with this week who has had experience, not in this congregation yet, I hope not ever, um, that they were too, too young to have much to do in the church or much weight or, or authority. And I have talked to a number of our congregation, our elders, who feel as if they don't count and if they um, don't matter at their, because they aren't able to come on their own and be a part of this community and this place. Whatever it is you think is not enough about you, I can say adamantly you are wrong that God accepts every one of us, and you could do like my stepdad did and write um, something like, beloved of God, God trusts me, or some of the words from in here, to look in the mirror and see yourself the way God sees you, and figure out on your own or with others what God is calling you to do. Amen. We pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. You look beyond our outward appearance, O Lord, and see into our very hearts. Move us in the same way to push ourselves past what the surface reveals and probe the depths of ourselves and those around us, that we might bring an authentic witness to your unconditional love. God of wisdom, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. The illusion of beauty fades, O Lord, as quickly as a fragile blossom wilts upon the vine. Connect us with those things 
which will sustain over the long haul, rather than those which bedazzle us for a while and then dry up. God of wisdom, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Strengthen loving relationships between people and show us by example how to truly respect and cherish one another. Bless those who have chosen life without a partner and those who desire a relationship but do not currently have one. Bring us to a fuller sense of compassion for those around us, the kind that supersedes jealousy insecurity, and bitterness. God of wisdom, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Almighty God, you have given your Holy Spirit to the church to lead us into all truth. Bless with the Spirit's grace and presence today those who today will participate in this congregation's annual meeting. Keep us steadfast in faith and united in love that we may manifest your glory and prepare the way of your kingdom. God of wisdom, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Holy One, you have anointed us with your healing balm and offering, offered us the blessing of your wholeness. We lift up for the family of Bobby who passed away last week. Sandra, Elsie, John, Kathy, Darlene, Carol, David, Wilma, Shirley, Revan, Kurt, Katie, Lynette, Betty, Joe, Len, Mary, Patty, Barbara, Jan, Marilyn, Heather, Mark, Adeline, Constance, Robin, and all others we now name before you. Jad. God of wisdom, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Your saints are a continual <laughs> reminder <clears throat> that the victory does not always go to the strongest, most popular, or most outwardly beautiful. With your servants of every age, we are in good company and share in your holy fellowship. God of wisdom, hear yeah. our prayer. And to what else do the people of God pray? Hear our prayer. We give you thanks, O oh God, for the rain in which our area needed so much, but we also know that with the wind and the rain, there are others that might be in the path of floods. Be with us all and be with them and be with all those as well who continue to battle with some aspect of COVID either in the midst of disease, in trying to prevent and care for those infected or those who live with lingering effects. God of wisdom, hear our prayer. Cleanse our hearts and hear these prayers, O Lord, offered in hope for a world that sees as its creator does with one all-loving gaze and irrevocable promise of deliverance for all. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also to you. And we give thanks for all those who contribute generously to this congregation with um, prayers, with efforts, with um, finances. And with Nell, who has, is not a member, but um, has sent in a, a contribution recently, and I, I hope, if you're watching, that I will get to meet you soon. <laughs>
pray. Generous God, thank you for all that you have given us. Receive now our offerings this day. Take and use them for the building of your kingdom. May they be a sign of all that we offer, and may they remind us that all that we are and have comes from you. Amen. Please stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. And also with you, lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right. and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love, you sent to us Jesus, your son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, he gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to all to eat, saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gracious God, may this bread and cup be a reminder to us also of your faithful promises and the trust that we can place in you to keep them. Amen. And now we join in the prayer that Jesus taught us. You are invited to use the, the word, the, the um, name that you wish, creator, parent, father, um, or to speak from the language of your heart. Creator in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be, be your name. name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come. come. Your, your will be done, done on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us today our, our daily bread. bread. Forgive, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated, as I explained, to, um, if you are a visitor here um, or visiting online, we believe this table is Jesus and that all people are invited to participate. And so um, we share, we believe the Holy Spirit joins us together um, from table to those sitting here, from table into 
the, wherever you are online. Um, if you have bread, a beverage, and um, wine or grape juice, you can know that through the intent, through the, the Holy Spirit, and because of Jesus, this is what Jesus says. This is my body given for you. This is my blood shed for you. In these ordinary elements of bread and wine, God has made something extraordinary, just like God does with each of us. By feeding us with unremarkable things, God imparts the mysteries of God's radical faithfulness to us. May we come to God's table with awe, humility, a sense of service, and gratitude for all that you have given us. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus Christ, host of this meal, you have given us not only this bread and cup, but your very self, that we may feast on your great love, filled again by the signs of your grace. May we hunger for your justice and thirst for your peace. For you reign in love and justice and peace forevermore. Amen. Amen. Stand as you are able, so that way you can sing out when we sing. We'll be singing verses 1 and 5. I wanted to remark on that now. We have worshipped God. We have seen that God knows our deepest yearnings. We have heard that God knows our potential. We know that in all things, it is God who calls us to live and love and be God's people today and always. In the name of God, creator, redeemer, and sanctifier. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. God.